continuing on for our last video, we will now be looking further into the potential attacks inside our bakery scene, focusing on the manipulation of the environment to give the sensors false readings or false actuation actions. We will also look into the different attackers there may be and how we can mitigate some of the attack risks. In our last video, we manipulated the yeast sensor to face the wrong way. This prevented it from triggering the bakery's usual subsequent actions. Something like that tends to be quite obvious to anyone that walked past on the shop floor. One slightly less obvious option to attack one of our sensors would be to adjust the positioning of a retroreflective sensor's reflective counterpart. This is less likely to be noticed at glance when walking past, and in this scenario it would have a similar effect to moving the diffuser sensor, in that the ingredients would be triggered incorrectly. In a batch process like this, it would cause the stop to come up and the ingredients to be poured as soon as the batch process starts, making a mess all over the conveyor and preventing the ingredient from being included in the batch of bread. As factories such as this tend to control their batch process remotely, this may mean the issue isn't noticed for a period of time, messing up many batches or even decreasing the expected revenue for the company. Another way of manipulating our environment to change the action on the sensor would be to change the conveyor belt. It is common that conveyor belts can have a manual override switch that allows the user to select which way the conveyor belt runs. The conveyor we use in the factory OS scenario does not have a switch, however for the purposes of demonstrating this I have just flipped the conveyor around. Similarly to in our first attack in the previous video, this is an attack that would be very noticeable in a factory like this. However, if you were to physically switch the conveyor in the middle of something such as baking the bread, then it may take longer to notice as the oven is usually covered and cannot be seen without proper inspection. An attacker could also change the speed of conveyors or temperature of the different ovens, as these often have physical dials by the relating section of the factory. I mentioned in the last video that not all transduction attacks are caused by malicious attackers. Some of these happen accidentally. It is worth noting that depending on the cyber physical control system being used, there are many different types of malicious attacker. The most common and most overlooked of these are the disgruntled employees, who tend to know the most about how the system works and have physical access to the area. You may also come across threats such as thieves, espionage and terrorists, particularly with systems that are key to a country's critical control infrastructure. These attackers use similar techniques to attempt to gain access to these factories, using social engineering techniques to get information out of employees and using tools such as Google Street View to gauge mm -hmm. security protocols. This is where deterrents such as security guards, high fences and barbed or razor wire, floodlights and cameras come into play. If a control system is shown to have high security measures or multiple security systems in place, attackers are less likely to attack that particular system. Checkpoints and specified paths can help to delay attackers if they were to gain access to the site, making it less likely that they will have the chance to attack something of high priority or their intended target. Alongside different visual and physical deterrents, different mitigation and prevention techniques can be implemented. When the control systems were first implemented, the most common technique to protect them was to isolate them completely from the internet. As the internet and the world around control systems has changed, this has become a much harder task to do. As common practices and the efficiency of interconnected systems have created sensible reasons to have a system connected to the internet. This tends to be combated by implementing firewalls, data diodes and demilitarised zones to create network isolation between the general internet and any internal network such as an intranet that is being used. Preventing any remote devices such as 4G or 5G devices from being connected can reduce the risk of an external user gaining access to the systems. It is also good practice for a control system to implement good access control mechanisms such as making use of dual access with an RFID card and a PIN ensuring that employees only have access to what they must have access to, rather than allowing them access to all areas of the factory or more than what they need for their job. Often, cyber-physical control systems run on what is called a legacy system, one that tends to run for at least 25 years, meaning that it cannot always have the latest security measures implemented. This can mean that new vulnerabilities are discovered in the system post-installation, such as with the Heartbleed vulnerability, where many of the devices will not be patched with a fix. A common added security measure with these systems is to add a bump in the wire. A bump in the wire protects the system from untrusted parties on the network by utilising a secure channel to transfer unencrypted packets. In control systems where the system is not continuously running, such as a batch process, a common prevention method is to reset the code back to a secure version between each batch run. 
ensuring that if an attacker did change anything, it would only ruin one batch before returning to its expected results. This is known as an inertial reset. A proactive mitigation technique to help prevent the transduction attacks is to use sensor fusion. This usually involves using multiple sensors to ensure consistency between them. An inconsistency with this implementation would either suggest an attacker is on one of the sensors, or an issue with the sensor itself. Resilient estimation can also be used to ensure that the reported sensor values match up with the expectations of what they may be based upon the knowledge of the control system. Such as in a baking oven, you would generally expect the values to either be at zero when the oven's turned off, or around 280 degrees, or continuously moving as it works up to 280 degrees. This can help a system to reject attempted attacks when the values are outside of an expected range. Actuator constraints can also be put in place to restrict how fast the operation of the system could be changed if an attacker were to gain access.